And what impact does diet have on cognitive decline? How can diet reverse this? Yeah, this is a great point. Diet is one of the most important risk factors. So most of us are on the standard American diet, as they say, SAD, SAD. Uh, and what does that do for us? It increases our blood pressure. It gives us insulin resistance. It gives us obesity. It gives us uh, systemic inflammation, increased risk for heart disease, increased risk for metabolic syndrome and type two diabetes and increased risk for dementia. So it's really a horrible thing for us in the long run. And optimizing our diet on the other hand with a, a, a mildly ketotic diet, uh, plant rich, doesn't have to be all plants, you know, have some, absolutely some, some wild caught fish, have some, uh, uh, you know, have some pastured chicken, have some, uh, have some uh, uh, grass fed beef, all these things are wonderful. Uh, or if you want to be a vegetarian, that's okay, too. The whole point here is to drive your neurochemistry in a positive direction. Now, having said that, it's not a cure. Again, it's part of the overall uh, orchestration, the, the coordination of what gives you best outcomes, but it is a very, very important component to get the best outcomes. And we recommend people, you know, get high fiber because that's helpful for detox. It's helpful for glycemic control. It's helpful for lipid control. And so it's helpful for your vascularization. Um, it's amazing how helpful that is. Um, and again, phytonutrient rich, plant rich, uh, organic, especially because so many of these uh, pesticides, major, major uh, problem. Uh, so all of these things, uh, folding them into an optimal diet can be very, very helpful. In your book, The End of Alzheimer's, there's a chapter called Disrupting Dementia. Please explain what this was about. Right. So the whole idea of disrupting dementia is just that we've had this static view of dementia for years. And, and, and it's interesting, every expert learned that line and they would say this at every meeting. They would say, there is nothing that will prevent, reverse or delay Alzheimer's disease. And that was just this mantra that everyone would you know, would spew. And that you know, made you feel very scientific. I know this, this is very scientific. Well, in fact, that's wrong. And so what we're saying is we are disrupting with the science, looking for all those years, and this is literally coming directly from the test tube, looking at what drives the problem, that's no longer the case. So we are disrupting the idea of dementia and what can be done about it. How does exercise impact dementia? Great point. And as many groups have pointed out, exercise is a, uh, is a major player. It actually very helpful, but on both sides, sedentary lifestyle, very supportive of Alzheimer's and exercise, especially optimal exercise, very good against Alzheimer's. And again, start early, very powerful effects. And it's multiple ways. Again, let's go back to the biochemistry. What does it actually do? Well, number one, it improves your insulin sensitivity. So you are, you know, for, for one thing, weight training actually helps your muscles have insulin receptors on them. You are improving your insulin sensitivity. You are also improving your oxygenation. You are also improving your cerebral blood flow. You are also enhancing your ketosis. Interestingly, ketones actually you know, enter your brain interact with specific ketones, or specific histones, sorry, the histones which actually are preventing the production of BDNF. These are then removing that inhibition uh, and showing that there's now an increase in your BDNF. Um, and you, this has been uh, noted repeatedly, the increase in BDNF with exercise. It also, of course, improves blood pressure in the long run, improves your, your quality of sleep in the long run, reduces your likelihood of depression in the long run. So there are many, many ways, and we recommend both aerobic and strength training because they have complementary uh, positive effects uh, for cognition and for prevention of cognitive decline, as well as helping with the overall reversal of cognitive decline. Does too much or too little dietary fat contribute to dementia? Yeah, um, so this is a, another good point. And it, again, it's not so simple to say it's good or bad. 
Um, we've all been, we've all heard about, you know, being uh, the amyloid was vilified and then of course fat was vilified. Well, the wrong kind of fat in the wrong way can be a problem. If you've got inflammatory fat, if you've got a lot of saturated fat and we, well, there's something we call the, the Burfuda triangle. You have three things. This was first pointed out by, by, um, by Dr. Mark Hyman years ago. And it's a very good point that he made, which is that if you've got the combination of saturated fat, and you've got high simple carbs, so you're now eating sugar. Um, this is, you know, basically go out and get a, a cheeseburger, fries, and a, and a coke, uh, or a soft drink. Um, and you've got very low uh, fiber, so you're now also not getting rid of that high carb intake. That is a horrible triad, uh, and uh, really increases your risk for a number of diseases, including uh, cognitive decline. So that is, that's the way you don't want to have fat. On the other hand, if you look at what are the diets that are actually associated with best cognitive outcomes, they are high fat and, you know, polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturates, excellent. Uh, but a small amount of uh, saturated fat is fine as long as you, you've got also you're, you're getting the fiber and you check your LDL particle number, make sure that you, you've got a good profile. So it's high fat, intermediate protein, low carb, and virtually no simple carbs. These things are very damaging. And so, that is, so that's where, yeah, fats, that, that is a very positive thing in terms of a combustible substrate. You're helping to produce these ketone bodies. So this is a mildly ketotic diet. We like to see people between 1.0 and 4.0 millimolar beta hydroxybutyrate. And if you don't want to measure it in your blood, you want to measure it with a breathalyzer. Great. There's a, something called a biosense that is a very nice, uh, simple thing to use. And you want to stay, you'd like to get above seven and at least at one time of the day above 10 on the so-called ACEs. And that's very similar to getting, you know, one to four uh, in the uh, in the BHB in the beta hydroxybutyrate that you get from a finger stick. So please get yourself into mild ketosis as part of the overall plan. It gives best outcomes. It allows you to bridge that energy gap. Others have said Alzheimer's is type three diabetes. Do you agree with this? Not completely. So the idea here is correct. That is uh, type three diabetes. Yes, no question. Insulin resistance, very important. Type two diabetes increases your risk. But as you can tell from this neurochemical uh, imbalance, you can get there without diabetes. Yes, it's a common contributor. And so in that sense, yes, type two diabetes and insulin resistance are clear contributors, but they're not the only ones. You can also get there through toxicity. You can also get there through inflammation. They're just some of the most common ones.